friends. Welcome to Stitches and Starlight. My name is Tashiana, but you can call me Tashi because we're friends now. Um, this is my corner of the internet where we talk about what I'm knitting and spinning and sewing and potentially weaving. It's just all the fiber things all the time. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. There are a million voices clamoring for your attention on the internet and you saw my little thumbnail and decided to click on it and that makes you a rad human. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for coming. And if you are a returning viewer, you know, you know already. Um, I'm coming to you from my home in Brooklyn that I share with my husband Joshua and our two hell kittens, Minerva and Astoria. Um, and that is that's that for introductions. This is episode four of the Stitches in Starlight podcast. Um, and I have a lot, as usual, to share with you. But first, as promised, you can't really see it because it's just a blob of light. But as promised, I do have the light box that has the current yardage of our stash down. We are at 10,000 yards, as promised. And as we get finished objects, that number will go down and we are going to get to the 10,000 yard stash down. It is not negotiable. It's happening. Um, a, a few bits of housekeeping before I get started. Um, you guys, there's 3,000 of you, which I don't even know if that's a real number. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for clicking subscribe. I am so grateful. I have had a I've been on an emotional roller coaster these last few weeks and it's been a very good thing. Like, I'm not complaining. It's been a very good thing. Um, but my goal was a thousand subscribers by June and I thought this was just gonna like, you know, kind of coast up there and grow organically and we would see what happens. And instead all of you guys were like, no, we're here and we're staying and you're stuck with us, which also my whole heart for every single one of you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for being here. I am so overwhelmed. I am so grateful. Um, my real mission for starting this channel was because I wanted to share my love of spinning and knitting, but I also wanted to help make it accessible for people who did not think it was accessible. Um, I know that there's like this perception around this craft um, and I want to kind of de demystify a lot of it. Um, and so that was my real objective for starting this channel was to start demystifying spinning for a lot of people and processing raw fleece for a lot of people and prove just how open and accessible and amazing it is. Um, and the fact that all of you guys are giving me a chance to share my love and my heart and my craft with you is amazing. And I hope that I can to inspire you. I've gotten a bunch of messages from people who are getting their first spinning wheels or contemplating getting fleece in the spring, which get all the fleece because I can't have them. I've already given you my sources. Knock yourself out. Um, so yes, thank you so much for being here. I had every intention of doing a 1000 subscriber giveaway, but that has come and gone. So we are going to do some sort of giveaway probably at the end of January when I can get my act together because I thought I had time. Um, so probably by the end of January, we'll do a, just a big giveaway to say thank you to all of you for being here. There's going to be a spinning giveaway and a knitting giveaway. The spinning giveaway is going to be um, some hand processed fiber and the knitting giveaway is going to be a skein of my hand spun, which is why I need time to get my act together. But there will be giveaways for me to say thank you so much to you guys for being here. So that is, let's go. Let's get to work. So I have a lot to show you. I only have one knitted project for finished objects. I have a few skeins of hand spun for finished objects. I have so many whips, so many whips. Let's do the finished object first. So here's my only finished object. I haven't even woven in my ends. Tashi is a chaos gremlin. I am literally just a disorganized human pretending to know what I'm doing online. Um, this is the grow hat by Lerka of Fiber Tales. And it has cables. Also, thank you so much to the person who reminded me, not reminded me, who informed me that to get your camera to focus, you just have to cover your eyeballs. Um, I wish I remember who told me that because that was a really useful tip. And we'll see if my camera focuses better today because I will not have my eyeballs in all the shots. Um, but anyways, here's my hat. So it's the, um, the Grow Hat by Lerka. And the hat is to mimic growing leaves. I am going to put it on even though it's hot. Here's my hat. It fits beautifully. I knit this out of the same mystery skein of hand spun that I knit my Harlow worsted hat out of. Um, it is a, it's, I think this is called a watch cap. 
So it has like really fun decreases. It has the cable detailing. It fits really nicely. Um, it covers my hair well. I'm always like concerned because I have such thick hair that's just getting thicker and longer by the day. Um, but it fits brilliantly. I think the only thing I would have done is maybe knit it a little bit longer because I would have wanted it to cover my earlobes and I have a big head. So maybe I would have done, maybe done more. I mean, I guess I could just unfold the ribbing a little bit more. Never mind, it's perfect. <laughs> Never mind, it's great. Um, it was four inches of ribbing. I talked about this on episode three. It's four inches of ribbing, so it's a lot of ribbing. But it fits brilliantly. I'm not gonna leave this on for longer than two minutes because I'm already starting to sweat. Also, I feel like I should give this caveat every day until the winter is over. You might hear my radiator. It's designed to keep me toasty and warm, so if you hear any clanging or any hissing, that's just because I live in an old apartment building, and it happens. I'm gonna leave the hat on as long as possible because it's really cute. It is really cute, but also it's making me very warm. So we'll see. Um, other finished objects. So my other finished objects are hand spun. Um, here's, here's a skein. It's, oh, it's pretty. Okay, so here's the skein. So what it looks like. This is Corydale, uh, dyed by Emily Giles. Gills? Gills? Oh, we're doing this again, where I don't know how to say anything. Um, it's Corey Dale, and Emily dyes in gradients, so she doesn't do, like, re repeats when she does her dyes. Her dyes tend to be just one gradient skein. And so I thought it would be really fun to just spin it end-to-end -end and not strip it down. So that's what I did. I spun it end-to-end. -end. I did not strip it down, so I would get a gradient yarn. So here is what the yarn looks like. It is just it's a gradient yarn it is it's not necessarily self-striping because it's just going to go through it it's not repeating so it just goes through it once so it goes from this teal to this icier blue to this pink to this like um coffee colored um and then I chain plied it to maintain the repeats and I did a really 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 soft twist angle on this I think I did I think the finished twist angle was maybe between 25 and 30 degrees, which is a soft twist angle for me. For some people, that's their default. But for me, 25 to 30 is a soft twist angle. Um, and this ended up about DK weight yarn. And I had spun this. I was having uh, Brenna, my friend Brenna was calling it Shiny Squirrel. I was having Shiny Squirrel um, in the Stash Down Discord. Everyone's sharing all the things that they're working on. And I kept getting distracted from the things that I was working on to wanting to work on something that they were working on. So I was having a bit of like Shiny Squirrel moment. Um, and Brenna is planning on knitting the Western Rose Pullover by Thea Coleman. I'm pretty sure it's who designs that pullover. Um, and it's a bottom-up construction where you have a flower detail color work. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool to knit that in a gradient yarn so that like the color changes happen for you? So I dropped everything and spun this whole four ounces in one day. I'm telling you, I had a problem. I spun this whole four ounces in one day, which is an extraordinary, uh, uh, don't do that. I mean, do it if you want to, but don't do that. Um, I spun all the singles and plied it and finished it in one day, which is a wild choice. Um, and then I was like, oh, this yarn's really pretty and I did nothing with it. So I might knit that pullover or I might just stash that 250 yards of uh, gradient skein yarn. So the other uh, sp uh, skein of hands when I finish is this one. Oh, this is, this is like, mm, look at how moody and juicy that is. So this is a combo spin of hushed stillness and overcast on bfl by three waters farm um and this was another bit of shiny squirrel um max the knitter we'll talk about it when we get to actually we'll talk about this when we get to works in progress but the bottom line is i had a shiny squirrel moment and i spun and plied eight ounces of yarn in two days which i also do not recommend don't do these things i mean again choose your own adventure do these things if you want to but spinning eight ounces in two days is a wild wild thing to do and you don't need to do that take your time there's no rush there's no expiration date on these things but I did spin all eight ounces in two days this is one of the skeins because the other skein is caked up and I'll show it to you when we get two works in progress that's BFL which handles like a dream BFL is like one of my favorite fibers to spin and this is what you guys have all been waiting for I have my advent spin um so here is what it looks like so we're gonna slowly turn it So this is the advent spin and if you hung out with me 
um, during any of the Vlogmas videos where I was working on this spin, this is what it looks like all finished. So I did a three ply yarn to get a really chunky yarn. Um, this finished at a worsted weight and I have about 600 and 20 yards. I should have brought my notes. I have notes. I think I have about 620 yards, which is more than enough for the Trinigan, which is what I'm going to do with this. If you've watched my knitting plans video, you already know that I'm going to be knitting the Trinigan with this um, yarn, and I have more than enough for it. It's so fun. It's so squishy. There's a million fibers in there. So there's Rambouillet, there's Targi, there's Polworth, there's BFL, there's BFL Silk, there's Merino. There's literally everything in it, which is like, it's a combo spin, who cares? Um, the most important thing is that the, the singles had a similar twist angle and that they didn't have like super different handles. So someone asked me about mixing fibers for a combo spin. And here's my theory for mixing fibers for a combo spin. As long as they are close enough in staple that when you're spinning it, you're not spinning each ply so what I did was I spun them all to one bobbin and you want to make sure that you have close enough uh, a close enough twist angle on the whole bobbin and when you're doing a bunch of things at different staple lengths and different densities that becomes really difficult so like if you're doing a combo spin with all fine wools that tends to be easy because they all they're all going to be about like 19 to 21 microns so they're all about going to have the similar hand feel they're all going to have similar staple lengths and they're going to spin about the same i wouldn't mix like a romney and a merino in the same combo spin because the romney is really dense it's going to have a higher micron count it's going to feel different and then you're going to run into places where your yarn might not behave the same because if it feels different it's going to it might behave differently and these are all none of these rules are hard and fast these are just how i attempt a combo spin so i will spin a rambo and a targi and a merino because they're all in the same categories i'll even throw a bfl in there because even though bfl is not a fine wool it behaves like a fine wool so i'll even throw like bfl in there with a the combo spin but once you cross bfl and you start getting into the more medium long wools i wouldn't i wouldn't um i would throw a corydale in there even though corydale is considered a medium wool as long as it's not too long stapled like you want to feel your fibers if your fibers feel similar then they're going to handle similarly in your yarn. I'm working on a combo spin for the Shift Again right now that is a combo of Corydale and Finn. They feel exactly the same to the touch. So I don't, I think mixing them is brilliant. So touch your yarns, touch your fibers, see if they feel the same. If they feel the same, if they handle the same, if they're spinning similarly, if you don't feel like you have to like struggle to go from one fiber to the other, chances are your combo spin is going to work out just fine. Also, you're knitting with it. All that madness is going to be diffused over like 600 yards. It's not going to be that big of a deal in the end. That's my spiel on combo spins. So anyways, advent combo spin in the bag. So let's do works in progress real quick. Um, I have not shown you my D&D sweater in some time because I was not making any progress on it. But I have, I'm taking this hat off. I can't deal. Woo child. Okay, I was not making any progress on it. That was a bit excessive, but I needed to like zhuzh my hair up a little bit. Um, I am again making progress on my D&D sweater. So now you'll see it. Um, I, I left the progress, I put a progress keeper so you could see where I was the last time I showed it to you. So this is where I was the last time I showed it to you. And this is where we are now. So I have made significant progress. And if this is your first time seeing this, I call it my D&D sweater because I leave it on my desk and I only knit on it when I play D&D. It's a mosaic color work project. So just carrying around two skeins of yarn and blah, blah, blah. So I leave it on my desk and then I play D&D once a week anyway. So that's guaranteed four hours of knitting every time I play. And typically every time I play, I get one flower knit in. I'm almost done with this flower and then I'm going to split fronts and backs. So we're going to have... I'm hoping that once I split front and back, it's going to be much faster. Because again, it's 315 stitches. It's a lot of knitting. And each row, you got to knit twice because it's mosaic knitting. So this is the Pressed Flowers Cardigan by Amy Christophers. I probably should have told you what it is instead of calling it my D&D sweater. But again, you probably already know what this is because everyone and their mama is knitting it. So here's what mine looks like. I am knitting mine out of... Um, Magpie Fibers Nest Castaway, Nest Sport in the color Castaway, and the contrast color is Handspun. This is 
Hello Yarn Thorn Apple on Corydale. And the Magpie Fibers Nest Sports is also Corydale, so this is all a Corydale sweater. It is super squishy. It's just... Mm. Like, I, I wish you could reach out and squish that. It's super squishy. I am knitting my body to 13 inches, so it's still going to be a little bit cropped. Um, I don't want it to be like a full-length cardigan, so I'm knitting it so it's a little bit cropped because that's how it looks like it's designed to be. So I'm knitting my body to 13 inches. By the time I finish the flower that I'm working on, I will have 13 inches, and then I'll be separating four front and backs. But I love how that looks. Also, the inside of it, I think that looks really cool too. Those... Um, I gotta figure out how to stop my lights from automatically adjusting. We are still learning this camera. I've had it for a month. I still have no idea how to use it. I have to figure out how to stop my lights from automatically adjusting um, to the changes around me, but I'll figure that out for next time. So sorry about the change in lighting. Again, growing pains. We're still figuring this out. Um, so here is the inside. I love the inside of this. Um, I mean, if I could figure out how to like make this look neatly I can't do it but like I think this would be really cool to wear this way too because you can really see the striping in the hand spun which I think is really fun so that is my first work in progress and then I have a bunch of them that are in project bags actually I'll just show you the bag of here is the bin up I'm dragging yarn around I'm always dragging yarn around um here's the bin of project bags that we're gonna open. Um, my friend Meg was very kind to me and sent me a bunch of project bags because I needed a few of them because my stuff was just everywhere. So we're just gonna open them and I'll show you what I'm working on. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, acquisitions because I still have some because I bought them in 2022 and they don't apply to the no buy. Um, you feel free to fight me. Okay, so the first, I just grabbed bags. The first whip I have is I just cast on a few days ago the sweater number 18 for the bougie sweatshirt cow that Casey at Young Folk Knits is hosting. So here is literally all I have is the back. Here's what it looks like so far. This is all I have is just a few rows of the back. Um, it's actually pretty fun to knit. It is, again, it's a drop shoulder, so it's knit so it's knit flat. So there are a few places where you are knitting stock in that flat, so they're, you know, the purling. But it, the purling's going so much better now that I just Norwegian purl everything. And the sections of ribbing is really fun, doing purl, uh, ribbing with Norwegian purl, because I just don't have to toss my yarn around. It's just, it's working so nicely. This is knitting up into a really squishy fabric, um... If you saw my knitting plans video, you know you know what's in this, but this is Cascade 220 Heathers and Knitting for Olive. This is the Dusty Sea Green, Dusty Sea Green, and this is Sparrow. That's the colors. I, again, checked my notes. So this is what this is, looks like together, and then this is the fabric this is making, and it's been really fun to knit on. Um... It's not, I, last time I said it had lace in it, it doesn't have lace. It's just stockinette, ribbing, and garter. So there's no lace in it. Um, you do like wider and wider strips of stockinette, and then you do a few rows of garter, and then you do a, a rib row, and then you go back. And it looks like the rows of stockinette get wider and then narrower, and then wider and narrower. More narrow, narrower, more narrow. Language, not my strong point. It is what it is. Um, so that's that. And that's been a lot of fun to knit on. Um, the other one, I'm going to grab the other small project bag because this one will also be quick. Um, this is what that other skein of BFL combo looks like. This one's larger because when I skeined them, I didn't skein them uniformly. So one has like 350 yards and one has 250. So here's the large cake. That's what that looks like. It's really pretty, really moody. And I spun that for the Chevronopolis shawl by Max the Knitter because I, I was helpless to resist a geometric shawl moment. And since I'm not knitting the Opus shawl, I thought I would put another shawl on my needles that I could just like carry around. Not something that I'm going to actively work on, but for like road trips, like if we have somewhere where we're traveling, if we're going to be on the train, something that's not super hard that I don't need to think about that won't be super large. So... I mean, until it gets super large. So here's as far as I've gotten. I'm trying to figure out where my eyeballs are. So I'm trying to cover my eyes, but I don't know where my eyeballs are, which was a lot of fun. Here's as far as I've gotten. So you see, it just it just makes the chevron. And I'm knitting that out of some, oh, child, it's Superwash Merino Sport. And I have not knit out of Superwash Merino in so long that I forgot how much I don't like it. Um, 
So I'm definitely gonna have to rehome a lot of the Superwash Merino in my stash as I thought I could make myself use it, but I don't like it. I really don't like it. I'll knit non-Superwash Merino, but I don't, or maybe it's just this particular one, but I don't like the handle of it at all. Um, it's going in a shawl, so um, I don't, it's not gonna make some, as much, you know, skin contact, but it, it just, it feels, artificial that's what that's that's the only thing I could think of to describe it I, my hands have gotten so used to to the woolier wools that the superwash merino on my hand feels fake and so it's not for me and there's nothing wrong with like knitting with superwash I, I want to make sure that I'm making this perfectly clear if you love superwash merino like knit what brings you joy if that's what you have and that's what you want to use up if that's what you prefer like some people just prefer superwash merino I am not judging you. So I just want to make sure that's perfectly clear that I'm not like, you can't sit with me if you knit with Superwash Merino. You're not one of the Rad Tashi fam. Like this, that's not, that's not the games we're playing. It's just not for me. Um, and I cast on that shawl and I was just like, oof, oof, oof. That doesn't feel good. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And again, this, it might just be this kind of super, I'm going to give uh, a few more of the other bits I have in my stash a try um, just to give it a go and decide if it's just that all Superwash Merino is just not for me or if it's just that this particular brand is just feels weird in my hands. Um, but it's not bringing me a lot of joy to knit. So we'll have to see. The problem is I don't want that shawl to turn into a slog. Um, so we'll see. Maybe I'll get over it. And if I don't, I haven't gotten very far. I might just rip it back and pick another white yarn because I have other white yarns. I just had enough of that and I wanted to use it up. And the goal was to use up my yarn. But I'm not going to torture myself either. So, oh, this is a fun project. So, um, I talked to you guys about my sidewalk chalk yarn. Here is a little bit I left I have of that one cake. So here's a little bit left I have of the cake. So you can really see like how variegated that skein is. Um, and I, I already have the next one caked up. So there you go. It's, it's, I mean, I'm hoping you can see that it's not just gray, that you can see, oh yeah, you can really see it in there. Like there, it's not just gray, it's different shades. Um, but I have almost finished the first 200 yard uh, cake of my sidewalk chalk slipover. So I cast this on, I don't know what day I cast this on. Um, I don't remember. I've had it on my needles for at least two weeks and I thought I was gonna make more progress on it, but squirrel brain. Squirrel brain is going to be the death of me. So I have not gotten very far, but I've made a lot of progress on it. So here's the back and I have already um, picked up for the fronts and joined the fronts. Um, and so now I just need to knit a little bit more stockinette and then join in the round. And once I get in the round, I'm about to be unstoppable, you guys. It's, 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 it's gonna be a uh, fast. Um, here's what it looks like. So you can kind of see, it's not just here. So there's that blue, there's some greens, there's some pinks, there's some oranges. It's not just gray. It's all the fun shades in the, I was talking to one of my friends about my sidewalk chalk yarn. And like when she talks to me about it, she puts the little TM after sidewalk chalk. So that's what I've started doing when I refer to my sidewalk chalk yarn is I go sidewalk chalk and I put the little TM. Um, like I've trademarked the idea of sidewalk chalk whatever um but this is so much fun to knit um just because you don't know what colors are coming up I really hope that that comes through in camera and you can kind of see that it's so fun and it's so pretty um and once I get in the round it's gonna be really quick I had I was really worried that I wasn't gonna have enough yarn to um to do the collar and the sleeve cuffs in the sidewalk chalk yarn because I think the pattern said I needed 700 yards and I only had 600. And I was like, worst comes to worst, I'll do a contrast color. I haven't finished the first 200 yards and I'm just, I have like three inches left of stocking net to knit and then I can join in the round. So it's safe to say that the first 200 yard cake got me through the first third of the slipover and I still have 400 more yards. I think I might have enough, but we'll see. I'm going to knit this to pattern. I'm going to try it on and then decide how long I want to make it. Um, and then if I have enough, I mean, because I still have 400 more yards and I can't imagine 400 yards isn't going to be enough to finish the rest of this and then just do a neckline and rib cuffs. Like you're not knitting sleeves. It's just going to be cuffs because it's a slipover. So I think I'm going to have enough 
but we'll see. I'm going to do the body first, do the ribbing, bind off, um, and then check from there. But it's been a lot of fun to knit because I don't have to do any thinking about it. Like when you were doing the short rows that you had to do a little bit of thinking and when you were doing the increases for the left shoulder and the right shoulder you had to do a little bit of thinking. But now you've joined them. So now now there's zero thinking involved. Now you're just like let's get it going. And it's just been a lot of fun. So I have one more work in progress um, and you guys are going to see this and I already know what you're thinking. I already know what you're thinking. I'm going to show it to you. And I already know what you're thinking, so here we go. Feel free to lecture me in the comments, but I'm gonna show it to you because I really like it. So here, here's my uh, other work in progress. I love it so much. I love it so much. Uh, it is. Let me get it. Let me get it out properly so you can appreciate this because this needs a moment of silence. Okay. Moment of silence. Um, this is the Sheep Camp sweater by Jennifer Berg, who's Native Knitter. I think Native Knitter. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Tashi, you just filmed a whole video with 13 knitting plans and the Sheep Camp sweater was not on it. And to that, I say, you are correct. You're not wrong. The Sheep Camp sweater was not on it wasn't on it at all. I didn't even know the sheep. I mean, I, I knew the sheep camp sweater was a thing because I've seen people make it, but it wasn't even on my radar. But let me tell you what happens. This is, this is why we don't do a make nine. This is why we pick things and we give ourselves full license to go off the rails. So I'd picked my 13 patterns and I was scrolling through Instagram like you do, like you do, right? Like you go scroll, scroll, scroll. Let me see what all my friends are up to. Let me like go hype somebody up, you know, like you do. And then I saw Cece of Stitch Witchcraft, who is probably one of the most flawless humans I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. And she was wearing a sheep camp sweater. And I was like, oh, what is that? And then I scrolled past it. Then I came back to it. Like, I, you know, when you keep scrolling and your brain was like, no, go back. And I went backwards and I was like, what on earth is that? And so I looked up the pattern and I was like, wonderful. This is amazing. I'm making this right now. I literally did not even think about it. I looked at it and I was like, Cece's making it and Cece's cool. So I'm making it. Um, and I, in my defense, in my defense, this is all getting knit from Stash. I did not buy any yarn for it, um, but it wasn't on the list. So, yes, you guys are correct. It wasn't on the list. Um, I knit this yoke in four days, which also, choose your own adventure, but you don't have to knit whole yokes in four days. That's an extraordinarily quick amount of time to knit the yoke of a sweater. I couldn't put it down. It's so good. So this is a Kelborn's Woolens, um their scout base in sunflower heather and then the contrast color you know where you know where i'm going with this the contrast color is hands fun it is um wild miles let me see if i have the rest of it in this bag oh i didn't put the rest of it in this bag what's wrong with me it's wild miles on pole wharf dyed by wee chickadee and one of my favorite things about the way uh, Jennifer at Wee Chickadee dies is she doesn't die for discrete stripes. She dies for like this fun painterly effect. So it doesn't look like self-striping yarn like other hand spun does. It's just like peaks of colors. Like it just changes color like gradually and naturally. Like down here it even goes a little bit pink. It's a really fun sweater. The color work pattern is super intuitive. Once you get past all the increases, like once you get to here, you've gotten past all the increases and you don't even need to do, you don't check the chart anymore. Like you're doing increases everywhere up until here. And then you just knit this triangle pattern. And I did not look at the chart. The, the color work uh, chart is like 65 rows. Once I got to row like 24, I didn't have to look at the chart. So I could just put on my, like put on my audiobook or put on something on TV and just like knit. And that's one of my favorite ways to knit color work is when I don't have to constantly be referring back to a chart um, and I just know what I'm supposed to be doing. It's really intuitive. It's really fun. It's a DK weight sweater, so it's knit pretty quickly. Um, I think I'm knitting mine on size eights. I swatched and I got gauge on size seven, but I always size up for color work. So I did the color work on size eights and then I went back to size seven for the stockinette. I'm just about to split for sleeves. And once I split for sleeves, it's just stockinette in the round. This sweater is incredibly cropped. Ooh, I don't know who it was designed for. 
it wasn't designed for me you're supposed to like knit the body to six inches and I was just like six inches where like that wouldn't even cover my navel that's so short so um I might end up playing a little bit of yarn chicken with this because I have the recommended yardage of the DK weight like the main color but I also want to lengthen mine so I don't know what to do I might knit the body first and then divide whatever I have left and then do sleeves. And if I end up with like bracelet length or elbow length sleeves, it is what it is. But I would rather the body be long enough that I'm comfortable wearing it than have full length sleeves and have the body be too cropped and then I never reach for it. I like a cropped sweater, but six inches, that's, that's beyond cropped for me. That's, that's a lot of croppage. That's very, very short. Um, so I'm probably going to knit the body to like 10 inches, which is as cropped as I get, um, and then see what I have left for sleeves. And worst comes to worst, do I've seen some people do short sleeves on theirs. So worst comes to worst, I could do a short sleeve on it or do like an elbow length or a bracelet length sleeve and not do full length sleeves. So we'll see. We'll see how we do. Um, I know sometimes pattern designers put like a little bit of a buffer in their uh, design requirements anyway. So I might have more than enough yarn. Um, my row gauge was pretty accurate for this pattern though. Sometimes my row gauge is off, but it was pretty accurate for this pattern. So that, those were all the whips. We got through those pretty quickly actually. Those were all the whips. Those were all the finished objects. I do have some acquisitions for you. I do. There are some fleeces. It just is what it is. I'm gonna go get them. So my first acquisition is some yarn from Blackberry Ridge Woolen Mill. Um, Blackberry Ridge has like a cult following and I don't know how I didn't know about them. I didn't hear about them until I was reading Clara Park's Vanishing Fleece and Blackberry Ridge makes some of her yarn and I was just like, oh, I should like look into them. Um, and then I felt the like the chains of the no buy coming and I was just like, must get yarn. Um, and I really, really want to knit the Kerr 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 sweater by um, the Kerr Abea, um, and it's this like drop shoulder sweater that has pull work, um, color work across the midsection. And so here is what I've decided on. So the gray is going to be my main color, and this is going to be my contrast color. So I got um, three skeins of the gray, which would make uh, what's three sixty times no three sixty times four. 1200 plus 1300 let's just say 1300 and one skein of this for my sweater someone informed me today which broke my heart that blackberry ridge might be closing like something on their website made it look like they were going to be closing and you know what happens to me right i instantly went oh i need to go get three more sweater quantities before they close i didn't do that you guys would be very proud of me because technically it's january Technically, technically, it's January and it's 2023 and the no buy has kicked in. And also, I'm really trying to get out of that scarcity mindset where it's like something's going to run out. So I really need to stock up because, yes, it would be sad if Blackberry Ridge closed their doors. But also, I have so much yarn and there will always be yarn. There might not always be yarn from Blackberry Ridge and their yarn's really special. If you've never had a woolen spun yarn from a mill that's small batch, you need to fix that ASAP. It's, there's nothing like it. So yes, there might not always be yarn from Blackberry Ridge, but there will always be yarn. And I really am really, really trying to condition myself out of that scarcity mindset because that's how I ended up with all of this. There was always some limited edition uh, dye run or something that I was not going to be able to get my hands on ever again. So I bought it and I bought more than I needed because I was like, I'm never going to get this again. Um, and that's why I have so much. Um, it's why I have so much comb top because a lot of them are like, we don't know when we're dying this color again, so if you want it now, get it now. And so I'm like, must have, must have, must have. And I'm really trying to train myself out of that mindset. I don't know if I'm going to su succeed, but the fact that I didn't immediately go on Blackberry Ridge and buy three more sweater quantities says that I'm making progress. Now, now, I'm saying that now. I don't know what's gonna happen in two weeks, but I'm saying that now. So that's where we are. Um, and my other sweater quantity, I blame. This, this purchase has a name, and the name on this purchase is the Marissa May Podcast. I 100% blame her for this purchase, and yes, she didn't make me do it. 
I am a fully functioning human with aut autonomy and a working brain and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. But I also blame her 100% for this purchase and I'm trying to get, get it out the bag so I can show it to you properly. So give me a second. Okay, so I have this yarn and this is for the Maplewood pullover that is in Lina's, Lina ep edition, not episode. Magazines don't have episodes. Lina edition 16. And this is the yarn. So I was watching Marissa, the Marissa Made podcast, and I'm feeling really bad because I don't think that her name is Marissa, and I probably should look that up. But I was watching the Marissa Made podcast, and she was talking about how she was going to make the Maplewood pullover in this exact yarn combination, and I was just like, it's not January yet. So um, the pattern is written for Wool Folk, uh, their alpaca bouquet, which is just way out of my price range. And she was talking about marling two strands of the Drops alpaca boucle, which is way more in my price range. So these are the two colors that I'm going to marl together. One is distinctly warmer, one is distinctly cooler. I think it's going to make a really fun fabric together. And then you get to do a contrast color for the raglans. So this is what I'm going to do for my... This is what I'm going to do for my contrast. This is uh, an alpaca wool blend. This is Drops Nepal. It's 65% wool, 35% alpaca. And then their alpaca boucle is 80% alpaca, 15% wool, 5% nylon. So there is a bit of nylon in this, which is not my jam, but um, it's way more in my price range than the yarn that was used in the maple wood pattern. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to this. I really, really want it. I've never knit with boucle before, and I've always wanted to learn to spin a boucle yarn, but I'm also like, I don't know anything about boucle, so I figured I'd get a boucle yarn um, and then try to reverse engineer it because I'll know what I'm looking for. So 100% blaming this purchase on the Marissa Made podcast, but I have zero regrets, and I'm really excited about this. So I have, um, I know, again, I know what you're thinking. You're like, Tashi, you had 13 sweaters on your list. You're already knitting one that's not on your list, and you have two more sweater quantities. That's 16 sweaters, my guy. What's going on? The goal was always 10,000 yards. That was it. The goal was not to knit the eight sweaters from that list. The eight sweaters from that list was the framework to make the 10,000 yards make sense, but the goal was always 10,000 yards. So if I get to 10,000 yards, who cares how I get there? Um, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I have, I'm gonna insert some wool processing footage here. I've been working on I mean, the, the merino fleece I showed you guys in episode one. I've been like sorting it lock by lock, um, which is taking a little bit of time, but a fleece that fine deserves that level of care. So I've been sorting that and then I did wash um, a beautiful BFL Coopworth uh, cross fleece. Um, so I'll insert some footage of the, the lock sorting for the merino fleece and a few pictures of the BFL Coopworth as I was scouring it and then I'll be right back.
So since we're talking about fleece, I'm going to show you my last few acquisitions. Um, yes, and I know what you're thinking. But I paid for these in December, so it doesn't count. So the first thing I have to show you is a Romney lamb. And this lamb, her, his name, I'm pretty sure it was a, 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 um, a ram lamb. His name is Clover. And he is being cared for in, on the West Coast at Powell's, Powell's, Powell Buttes. I think it's Powell Buttes. Um, I'm pulling out some of that Romney so you can see it. It is, whew, you, you guys, this staple length is, I just, I just want to talk about this staple length. This is outrageous. This is outrageous. So this is a lamb. Um, so it has the, you know, it's a little bit finer than a Romney. These, her sheep were not coated. So there's a little bit of VM in it, but you know, farm yarn and all that. And I can't imagine that this is going to linger. It has, I mean, it, the, the, the amount of lanolin in this is just extraordinary. There's so much lanolin in this, but the staple length is the, the crimp on these locks is just out of sight, out of sight. Um, and this Romney is not necessarily for me. This Romney is for Starlight Blends, which if you follow me on Instagram, you might already know this, but if you don't follow me on Instagram, I launched a bat making shop on New Year's Eve. I'm doing all sorts of scary things these days, guys. I'm just, I'm terrified all the time. I'm doing all sorts of scary things these days, and I launched a bat making shop on New Year's Eve um, where my goal was if you don't process raw wool, but you want to be able to spin raw wool, like you want the experience of spinning and playing with raw wool. Um, I have been carding bats from the fleece in my stash and then filling them. So I got, the, this fleece is massive by the way, ginormous. Um, so Clover's fleece is to re-up the amount of Romney in my stash because I've gone through 90% of my Romney in the first blend of the first batch of Starlight Blends bats. Um, and Romney is a fleece I really like to include in all my bats. It's just a really good universal staple. It's a good building block. It's a great, um, a great fleece to add different things to. So I wanted some more Romney. So that's technically, technically, first... Not all of it, half of it's for me. Half of it is technically for Starlight Blends. So I, I'm not taking full responsibility for that purchase. Um, I'm still trying to decide how I can tell you guys here about Starlight Blends shop updates because they're gonna be sporadic. It's gonna be when I have time to card up some bats and I have some stuff to list. Um, if I have a shop update date, I will try to make sure I include it in a podcast as I'm recording it. If not, I'll just do a community's post and I'll post to YouTube that, um, there'll be a shop update because I really want if you guys want to be able to shop the shop like I want to make sure that you guys know um but also I'm not trying to be like super heavy on advertising because that's not what I'm here for um I'm here to make stuff and share stuff with you guys so we'll have to figure out like a balance for what and how to do that but anyways all I'm saying is that Romney is for Starlight Blends so so if there are any acquisitions over the year some of them will be shop inventory and shop inventory doesn't count I'm just saying I'm just saying if I need some more Romney so I can make bats for the shop or if I need some more fin so I can make bats for the shop and I get a whole fin it doesn't count it's my story I'm sticking to it so I have a few more fleeces to share with you. This one is delicious. Well, actually, they're all delicious. I only get delicious fleeces. Like, I'm very picky. I'm very choosy. Um, this fleece came, you guys, with a picture of the sheep. So this is Finn. He's an Icelandic ram lamb. And I got this from Long Rifle Farm. Also, it came with a sticker. I feel like all my fleeces should come with stickers. No, no, no. I don't want any farmers watching this to think that they have to do any more work than they're already doing. They're already doing great work. But I saw that sticker in that picture and I started screaming. Um, uh, you guys, I'm just going to pick up this box so you can get in there. You you have to get in there. First of all, I wish these cameras came with smell-o-vision. Oh, raw wool smells so good. Here is, here is Finn's fleece and I only got half. Um, hello, cardboard box. Cooperate. That's Finn's fleece, and sorry about it getting blown out for a second as I was like wrestling with this box, but that's Finn's fleece. Finn is an Icelandic ram lamb. I will get my lighting fixed by the next time because I don't, I really don't want it to be making all these like 
shifts every time I move stuff around because I'm moving around the entire time and I really just wish it would stay put. So I will have to go back to YouTube University and figure out how to use my camera so I can fix that. Uh, but Finn is an Icelandic ram lamb. This is just, excuse me. This is, mm. Finn should be put on timeout for being as gorgeous as he is. And the people who are raising him should also be put on timeout for raising an animal as gorgeous as this. So I have nothing to say besides how dare he be this amazing. So here's, oh, fun Icelandic. So Icelandic is a dual coated sheep, if you didn't know. And the undercoat here is soft and downy and then the over, God, is it overcoat, uppercoat, or top coat? I don't know. The top coat is like long and like silky. And so you get like this dual coated thing. When I spin Icelandic, I like to spin it blended together. Now, if you've tried Let Lopi and you got let down by Let Lopi, haha, <laughs> you got let down by Let Lopi. I'm so funny. If you tried Let Lopi and you got let down by Let Lopi, um, Icelandic, like, raw wool is nothing like that. Um, I don't know if, like, let Lopi is separated or depending on, like, what sheep you get it from. Every Icelandic fleece I've handled has been a dream. Um, and I know Icelandic can be, like, off-putting because people only try let Lopi and Alifast Lopi and they think that's what Icelandic wool has to be. And it really doesn't have to be. It's a delight. It's, lan it's, it's high in lanolin. It's squishy. It's soft. I'm just here petting these locks. They're just, they're beautiful. So I have half a Finn's fleece. And just in case you thought I was Icelandic out, you're wrong. So my Canadian wool broker, also known as Melissa at Melly Knits, um, her cousin owns a flock of Icelandics and showed up at her house someday the last week of the year with like, 30 Icelandic lamb fleeces, like it's some ridiculous number, I don't know. And he was selling them for $20 Canadian, which $20 Canadian works out to be about $15 US, which in any market is a ridiculous number. And so I was like, give me three. So I have three lamb fleeces, three Icelandic lambs. Um, I'm just going to, I'm sorry about the crinkling bags, but it's kind of unavoidable. Um, his, I don't know if his sheep had names, but my fleeces do not have names. These are ridiculously well skirted. The black one probably has a little bit more VM than the others, but they're just, here you go. They're just gorgeous. So here is the black one. Like dark, dark, dark ebony black. I actually think this might be darker than Finn's fleece. I think Finn's fleece might be more of a charcoal and that is a true black. This one is a brown and gray. I think it's like a dove gray, but I'm just gonna open it up so you can like get in there. Like, look at how beautiful. It's so pretty, it's so pretty. I'll pull out a few, a few locks so you can kind of see. And because these are all lambs, these are shorter stapled, but also they're good. It's the softest this fleece is ever gonna be. Um, <sighs> Ooh, sorry, I didn't realize I made that noise where you guys could hear it. That noise was obscene, but wow, look at that, just pretty. So that's that's what that fleece looks like, and you can really see like that undercoat right here from separated from the top coat, the overcoat, because they're almost different colors. Um, Icelandic are primitive or unimproved sheep, um, so this is the way they've just always been. And this one. Uh, just says multicolored. It's uh, also gray, but taupe and just, there we go. That's, oh, maybe this will be my thumbnail. It's just be me holding up, every thumbnail is just gonna be me holding up fleece. I mean, probably not, cause I'm not gonna get fleece all the time, but oh, heavens, heaven. Lord have his mercy with this. This is, ooh, this is, you shouldn't be this pretty. I'm sorry. How do you exist? How do you exist in a world and be this fabulous? Sorry, I just, I talk to my fleece. It's just a thing we do. Look, look at that. It's beautiful. So that's my acquisitions. I have, I went from like one Icelandic fleece to five Icelandic fleeces um, overnight. 
Um, I live in a perpetual state of wool chaos. This is just the life I live. It's a life I choose. It's a life I thrive in. I'm living my best life. I'm being my best and higher self surrounded by sheep all day. Um, do what brings you joy, right? Like find what feels good and like dial in. Uh, try to dial out a little bit. I'm trying to dial out a little bit. Don't, don't dial all the way in. <laughs> find some balance. You didn't come here for therapy. It's not what you came here for. You came here for the chaos. So here we go. Wool chaos. You're welcome. All right, you guys, that's it for this week. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to share with you. Um, I'm just going to be knitting and spinning and living my best chaotic life. Thanks so much for being here. Um, again, 3,000 of you. What a wild number. What a wild, wild number. Thanks so much for being here. I hope this inspired you. Let me know what you're working on this week. Um, yeah, if you're doing the bougie sweater cow, drop your pattern. If you're working on your whips, I still have to show you guys my whips at some point. But that's it for now. I don't think I have any other announcements. I'm like, I'm stalling to see if I have any other announcements. The next Starlight uh, Blends collection is going to be Taylor Swift themed. It's called the Midnight Collection. I've already built all the recipes. I have all the cards ready. It's just a matter of getting some fleece in those bags and getting it on the carter. It's going to be, it's going to be so pretty. I'm so excited. So that's it, guys. Bye for now. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for being a rad human. Go make something fun. I love you.